What's up guys? So I've already seen and reacted to this trailer, but in case you haven't seen, uh, I would maybe not watch this and go watch it yourself. A uh, trailer for Detective Pikachu dropped a few hours ago and uh, I'm just now waking up because I'm a piece of shit. But uh, I wanted to kind of go through frame by frame on uh, the trailer video, which I have ripped off of YouTube. I'm very sorry to the companies who put out this trailer, uh, but I really want to take a super in-depth look uh, into like everything we know from this trailer and uh, see if there's anything that people might have missed or anything and uh, just get a better understanding of what we're, uh, I don't know, up against whenever it drops uh, in 2019, which I'm very excited. Pokemon fans have been waiting for like over two decades for a live action Pokemon movie. And so far, it doesn't look like it's going to disappoint. So let's uh, let's have a look see here in the trailer. I have my desktop audio muted because it's very annoying to slide through these kind of frames on Premiere. But if I need sound for this, I will put it back on. So just bear with me so you can grab that little slider and start sliding. And immediately what I want to talk about is how many Pokemon you can see on this screen alone. So if you'll notice right up here in the rafters, uh, it's hard to tell, but as you slide through, you can tell that those are actually Emolga that are jumping off and flying away. So watch this. He's, he's in his crouched position. It jumps up. You can just barely make out that long little tail of it. I'll zoom in too, actually. That'll probably help a little bit. We'll zoom in a little bit and move it over to the side so you can see. But if you slide through, oh, oh, where was it? It was right there. You can see its wings are spread out, its tail is behind it, and it flies away. And this also gives us a good chance to see the other Pokemon up here in the sky, because there is a few of them. So these right here are actually Flabebe. That's another thing I want to talk about real quick, is that they actually took the time to put more than just Pokemon from the original 151 in this. And there's actually a good handful of later gen Pokemon, especially it seems like there's a lot of uh, gen five and gen six Pokemon. Uh, and you'll you'll see as we go through, there's actually a bunch of them. So I think that right there is still one of the Emolga. That, from what I can tell, looks like a Comfey. It's flying weird. Like, like watch it right here and follow it as it goes. Why is it flying like that? I have no idea. It's a weird way to fly, but um, you know, it's obviously not a leaf. It's obviously not some kind of like kite thing because you know, it's keeping its its shape really well. And the only thing that makes sense is Comfey. So we got a gen seven Pokemon, but why is it flying like that? I really don't know. And then you can just make out stuff like, uh, I believe that's the, those are Pidgeys all right there. Let me zoom out a little bit real quick um, and cycle through just real quick again. I think that's all there is to note there, but something else to, to, to see in this is, uh, let's go back to full size and then zoom, hold up, come on. Where is it? Okay, yeah. So we have a bunch of stuff in the background, all inspired by Pokemon. So we have this sort of symbol that definitely is a Magneton. And we have, um, was it this way? No, I mean, granted right there, immediately we see a Dodrio, uh, but that's not really what I'm looking for. Let's go the other way. There's another Dodrio down there too in the bottom right corner of the frame. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but I want to take a look at all these shops and stuff. So we got RCPO or RCPD. So that's the police station. Uh, oh, we got a Slurpuff. I didn't even notice that on my first pass. Uh, what what does that say? That's what I want to know. Uh, Purin, pure, pure something like that. P puffed? Uh, I think that says puffed actually. Something puffed. I don't know. And there's a little uh, Petalil. And oh, that's a Gumi right there. I couldn't make out what it was before. That's a little Gumi thing. So whatever it's shop that is, fucking cool. Uh, 
Bear Universe, why not something? There's a whooper. And you know, that I think might just be a satellite. <laughs> Although I don't know. I don't know for sure. But then uh, up here we've got this big teeny thing that if we were in a different frame, you would be able to see it better. Yeah, see, there it is. Uh, and then I feel like there was one more thing up here that I wanted to note, but I can't really find it. So yeah, okay. Zoom back out and we'll take a look at some of the Pokemon that are in this shot down here. So we got, we already pointed out the Dodrio, but there's a Charmander walking by. Look at that. I, I will say right there that Charmander actually does look kind of cute. I normally am not a huge fan of Charmander, but I think one thing a lot of people missed is down here, right here, we have a Bufalant looking a lot smaller than you would think a Bufalant would look, but that's very clearly a Bufalant. You can tell right there, it's got the poofy hair, it's got the horn, and it's definitely not just a buffalo. <laughs> so, but it, it, it looks way smaller than you would think a Bufalant would be, unless, uh, unless it's just really far away or something, but it doesn't look like it's that far away because you can make out like the fuzz and stuff on it, so it can't be that far away. But there it is right there. Okay, and now we're gonna making it into the next shot. So let's go ahead and back back up. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much anything else to point out here on this screen. Uh, so we'll move into the next shot. It's just this girl in her truck, car. I think car. It, it looks really short to be a car. Uh, we, I'm just noticing this right now. She actually has a, uh, oh my God. Can you fuck off? Thank you. She has a spoink on her dashboard. That's adorable. That is super cute. I never noticed that during my first, I've watched this, I've watched this trailer like five times today, not including my first pass of like flying through the frames just to see if there was like enough stuff to talk about. No, oh my God, there is enough stuff to talk about. But um, over on this side real quick, uh, let's zoom this in. Mother heck, okay. Uh, we've got people dressed up in costumes. So like this guy passing by right here, the light blue and the green, the, he's very clearly dressed like in Bulbasaur colors. And then these guys back here, very clearly some kind of Squirtle thing. And I say guys because they're all three dressed like that, as well as um, all these people in purple. And we have one per person in yellow dressed like a Pikachu. Um, from the looks of it, I don't think it's like a gang thing. I think it's probably, it probably has something to do with the floats. I'm sure they're assigned to like different, um, but uh, what are those called? Blimps? Float, float things? I don't know, but they're different teams. So they probably just wear, you know, color coded, uh, uniforms for whatever thing they're assigned to. It would make sense. Uh, but there's not really a whole lot else to this shot at all. When I first watched it though, I thought that this uh, this Jigglypuff float was actually just a Jigglypuff. And I was like, oh, they did a good job on Jigglypuff. And then just completely watched until later when there is a Jigglypuff in the trailer, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it. I would highly advise you go watch this. So these are the studios that are putting it together. Um, I'm pretty excited. If I remember right, a lot of the stuff that Legendary has worked on has been stuff that I've really liked. Uh, so that's good. Blah, blah, blah. His dad was a cop. And I don't see anything here in the background that would make this seem, you know, pertinent at all. His dad was a cop. His dad was a really good cop. That's what this dude was talking about. Harry Goodman. Okay. So... This kid's last name is Goodman. I didn't even take a look at that before. Uh, all right, slide on through. He's got some awards and stuff. He's not like his dad. He's doing his job. That's really that's not really that important because I, I, you know, going through, you don't really see too much that's like pertinent to any sort of deep analysis. Although, try to look at the phone. Uh, let's do a 180 rotation here. What does that say? Uh, I don't know what that says. I can't make it out. 
Um, I don't know why, but just the interface on that uh, telephone thing looks strikingly similar to the interface on the bottom screen for uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver. Maybe I'm just making connections that aren't there. But you got to admit, like the button style and everything kind of does look like the button style on the bottom screen for Heart Gold Soul Silver. So, anyway, sliding back on through. Um, I don't think there's much here, honestly. There's whatever this is supposed to be. I wonder if it's supposed to represent some kind of gym badge. I thought maybe it might be the, the Pewter City gym badge, but it looks a little different, so I don't think so. And then there's this just a sign that says Mist back here. There's not really a whole lot in this section. Uh, there's really nothing there. He makes it into his room, and this is actually a pretty interesting thing. He's got a lot of, like, battle posters. So in this universe, it really seems like Pokemon battles especially against stronger Pokemon, really seem to, like, be treated almost like, uh, like boxing matches, basically, uh, with the posters and whatnot. It's pretty cool, although it makes you wonder, like, is, is that what Pokemon battling it just is in this universe? Is, like, uh, like, this kind of sport that involves all these, uh, all this advertisement and stuff? Or is there just like Pokemon battling like there is in the Pokemon universe and like the anime or the games where people can just kind of do it, you know? Uh, I don't know for sure if the posters are just for like big league things. But there I'm assuming is a picture of his dad. Um, we got, there's a Blastoise that says Rayquaza. It took me a little bit to figure out what the, what it said. Uh, Hip Dragonite versus Hypno. That really doesn't seem like a fair fight. I think Hypno would probably not take that, but whatever. Uh, we got a Charizard. Cerulean Arena finals next week. Okay. Uh, Johto Sport Club. I really like the attention to detail that Johto is like super. It's supposed to feel like kind of like a traditional Japan type area, and the font really. Uh, does a good job of displaying that. Little details like that are awesome. And then uh, that appears to be a Charizard and a Blaziken going at it. And then what does that say, if I can make it out at all? Uh, I can't really make it out. There is a XIII. What is that? That's 13, right? So something 13. Some kind of 13. And then right here on his desk, you can see a bunch of trophies along the top of the wall. There's a Rayquaza, blah, 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 blah. Walks into his room. He's very sad. Sinnoh Championship uh, XXIV. I think that's 2024. So maybe this is set in the future. I don't know. I, Im I imagine it's probably set in the future. Uh, slide on through. So, in a happy birthday card for his 21st birthday. So his dad has definitely, I mean, he doesn't look that old. He's gotta be like max 23. So like, you know, 21 year old birthday card with a, that's a rail ticket. And then I, so much of the text is covered that like, uh, it's really hard to see what it says. Uh, if you chance, uh, have a to stay uh, something that ends in a Y. Uh, I wonder if, does he shuffle does he shuffle it around enough to make out what it says? I don't really think so. Uh, so let's zoom out and get a good look at this ticket. Not really anything super interesting from what I can tell. Um, going to a place or no leaving Leventown to go to Rhyme City. Oh, this is a ticket. If he's already in Rhyme City, then he's from Leventown. That means he moved to the city to become a Pokemon trainer and it didn't work out. Oh, that's sad. That's kind of sad. Uh, so we'll slide on through. This is where uh, the Pikachu comes out. And also, uh, I don't, does this poster symbolize anything? I feel like they wouldn't throw something like that in there unless it meant something but maybe I'm just overthinking it. Uh, there's his desk. He knows how to use it. Pikachu! 
There he is. And then that speaker back there looks remarkably like one of those little mini Game Boy things. There's Pikachu. Voiced by Ryan Reynolds, no less. Amazing stuff. Amazing, amazing stuff. Put down the stapler or I will electrocute. He, I didn't understand why he pointed at his butt when I first watched it. I was like, why is he, why is he pointing at his butt? But it's, it's because, oh yeah, because his tail is shaped like a lightning bolt. He's saying, I'm going to electrocute you. And he drops a stapler based on the worldwide phenomenon. You're goddamn right, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Did you just talk? Whoa, did you just understand me? Oh my God, you can understand me. I've been so lonely. Okay, so this is another shot I want to talk about. Uh, in all of this that I've been skipping through, there's nothing interesting. I already looked through. You, you can't really make out what's on the newspaper at all. Uh, so in this shot, we can see a couple of things. There is an Audino right here. On top of that, that Dodrio you see right there. But there is there is this Audino and uh, at first, I thought it was someone in a costume. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, up here, we have some emulga. Let me zoom that in real quick and we'll go check it out. Look at those emulga. They look so cute, man. Look at them. Oh, they're cute. Uh, and then I think, I don't know if you can make it out in this shot. We cycle on through the frames here. I don't think it's actually in this shot, if we're being honest. But in this next shot, Right here, you can see a, ch oh, come on. Right here, you can see a Charmander and it's helping some dude cook in a walk. And I think that's awesome. That just, okay, again, I'm not huge on Charmander, but that makes Charmander just a littlest bit more cute to me. Blah, blah, blah. I tried looking in the background before for like berries and stuff. Pika Pika, yeah, Pika Pika Pika. Yeah, I was looking around in the background for like, I don't know, like orange berries or anything like that. But so far, like, look, those are those are just fucking green onions uh, right here. In this shot, you can see a Venusaur. Oh, come on. Here's the Venusaur. There's the odd no in like better view. And uh, so far in the background, I don't think I see anything else. Although what is. Come on. What is that? That looks to be just some kind of decoration, I think. It doesn't really look like anything. So zoom back out, slide through the frames. Wait, hold up. I thought I saw one more thing. What is that? I think I'm just seeing things that aren't there. Yeah, okay, I'm just seeing things that aren't there. Okay, so next summer, very excited. No Pokemon in these shots, just Pikachu. Find your pops. There we go. This is what I wanted it to do. Let's say so Pokemon are going missing, apparently. Um they wouldn't show that unless uh there was like a reason for it, you know. Uh let's see if I can get anything. Uh have you seen this Pokemon? Call if seen. Someone call that phone number. Don't actually call that phone number. It probably doesn't lead to anything. Now, the Pancham and the Squirtle are actually kind of important because you see them later in the trailer. Yeah, okay, that probably just says Pancham. Um, I wonder if we can make out anything else over here. Uh, meeting notice. What does that say? Does it say hat club? <laughs> I don't think that says hat club. Uh, it's really hard to make out a lot of this text because it's so small. So we'll go ahead and go on through. There's hopefully there's not anything super important there. Um, there's a guy waiting in a taxi. Pikachu is sitting on this guy's taxi. Can we talk about this real quick? He's sitting on his taxi. He's very clearly waiting on him. Like Pikachu, do you mind? Uh, do you mind moving it along? And he's he's having. He's having some kind of heartfelt conversation on the hood of his taxi. Inconsiderate. Oh, uh, this is one of my favorite shots because like, look at the look at the detail on these Morello. Like they're glowing and like, it's hard to see as it's moving by, but like, it's so smooth looking. 
like like a, you would think a morello would look because it's just like a mushroom thing and then the uh the bulbasaur look amazing my god the bulbs actually have a lot of detail to them too you can see like the individual leaves and stuff um if you look really closely they don't look necessarily like scaly but they definitely look bumpy which is how they're supposed to look because they're like partially based on toads and then we got homie holding pikachu back here so uh pikachu is going to get a big boo-boo in the video or in, in the video in the movie um spoiler alert <laughs> for a movie i haven't even seen then we got the shot with jigglypuff and i love it because i love jigglypuff but look how cute it looks look look at that face man i cannot say no to that face look at that he's so cute i fucking love jigglypuff i'm glad that jigglypuff is making an appearance and it appears that it's the jigglypuff with the marker <laughs> so i'm glad they're putting that trope in um there's another poster there by the way uh machamp versus primate so that's pretty cool i love that the currency is also still uh the poke dollars or poke or whatever the fuck it's called uh yeah that so that's that's a neat little detail they put in there's the charizard he is breathing the fire i tried looking through the fence and stuff to see if there was anything interesting there it's just people this one is a cool shot because it's all the it's like three greninja coming after you and look at the look at the detail on that eye man that is a frog eye that is a frog eye if i have ever seen one and look at that man look at that look dog it, it's blurred out a little bit but do you see how realistic that eye is that's crazy okay this is one of the shots that's important by the way right here because right here at the very bottom you can see the panchim that was missing in that poster see and then if you go up and over there's the squirtle from the missing poster as well and then and then and then and then right here as you cycle on through there's a rufflet there look at that look at that burb look at that birdie boy <laughs> look at that face he's absolutely horrified he looks like uh he looks like the penguins from madagascar <laughs> But yeah, there is a rufflet there on top of uh, Homeboy and the Pikachu. Uh, but I, I want to know the significance of the rufflet because like if, uh, you know, if the Panchim and the Squirtle were in the missing posters, what's up with the rufflet then? What's what's his story? Uh, this is a shot. Very briefly, you can see the Greninja chasing Homeboy and Pikachu. I don't remember his name because <laughs> I've been skipping through the trailer so much. Uh, but yeah, that is a Greninja. Something is blowing up next to them. Actually, it looks like, yeah, I think that looks like a water shuriken hitting them or hitting next to them, blowing something up. And then there's the Greninja and there's Pikachu. The wilderness, they apparently meet up with Chick with her Psyduck. So that's cool. And then why does he have an unknown h shirt i don't know it looks cool i want that shirt somebody please make that shirt or if it becomes like an official merch item for this movie i want one please send one to my p.o box i wear size uh xxl although i'm working on getting down to xl uh blah 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 shots of uh chick and why is her psyduck like strapped to her back that's what i want to know because in one of these shots i, I think it's coming later uh, there's Pikachu though. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now he's wearing an O shirt. I like his shirts. That appears to be a big wave. I think. I could be wrong though. Um, this is a scene where they're talking to a Mr. Mime. So you can shove it. That's the joke. Not a whole lot of a. Uh, not a whole lot of else there and the invisible wall ryan reynolds blah blah blah. okay another shot the greninja are very clearly after them the greninja are playing a big part in this which uh 
I think they're gonna be the criminals. I think it's pretty obvious that they're gonna be the criminals, but this shot is so cool. Cause he's like in the door and he's like, throws the water shuriken while his homie is running up on him too. Bruh, so good. Oh yeah, yeah. So like the Psyduck is like strapped to her back like a like a toddler, except on the, on the back. And then it has what I'm assuming is a big psychic fit in the middle of the forest because then boom. And there's that final shot with the Charizard about to eat the Pikachu. Oh no, Pikachu. Look how, look how desperate Pikachu looks in this shot, by the way. Just like he's scared for his life and he's adorable. And then Detective Pikachu. So yeah, we didn't need the sound through any of that. We did not need the sound through any of that, but coming in 2019, see it in real 3D. So it's gonna be a, a 3D movie. Hopefully they don't really cheese up a lot of the 3D shots or anything. But um, this movie, man, I, I am beyond excited for this movie. This is the type of movie that Fans of the fran longtime fans of the franchise have been waiting for for literal decades. I remember like it would have been about 2008, maybe that I started to get the inkling of like, what if there was a Pokemon movie? And then you go look up stuff on the Internet and you find all these like fake trailers and stuff that people have made. There was that one. I really don't remember what it was called, but it was like with the Pokemon fighting ring and stuff. And I was like, that's the future, except it's not gonna look as bad. And uh, yeah, here we are at that future. And it does not look as bad as that. This looks really, really good. A lot of the CGI looks really, really amazing. I think one of my only problems with it is that Pokemon that have fur, like Pikachu, it's so weird seeing them actually realized in fur. I'm sure that it'll grow on me or whatever, but as it stands right now, just Pikachu just seems too fuzzy. I think if they had done something to like smooth out the fur a little bit, instead of making him look like poofy, then I would have liked it more. But one of the only other things I don't like is like Jigglypuff's eyes. Like, okay, let me zoom in on Jigglypuff's eyes real quick. Because Jigglypuff has huge eyes and then they made the eyes look realistic and there's just something a little uncanny about it. And then the hair, I don't know, man. I think adding realism to like the hair on top of its head kind of takes away the fun of the poofiness of the poof on its head. That's just me though. And then my only other complaint in terms of how things look is right here with the panchum. It's really hard to make out because it's so small, but like if you zoom in, I don't know. It just, it feels too much like, I don't know, man. It just it just looks odd. It doesn't it doesn't look right in in some way. It's really hard for me to describe it because this is not something I'm used to talking about. But yeah, other than that, this whole movie looks amazing. I love the emotion they're putting here with a, like well with any of them really, but with the Pikachu, with the Mr. Mime and stuff, and the the addition of all like the little details in the background with because they could have they could have easily just like filmed this in New York and called it good. But they really took the time to add stuff in the background, like uh, like in this shot right here with all the little shops that are Pokemon themed and all the Pokemon that are flying around and walking around. They did, it looks like they did a really good job on this movie and I am incredibly, incredibly, incredibly excited for it. Uh, but yeah, so those are my thoughts. We took a look at everything. Let me know what you guys think about this movie in the comments. I would super appreciate it. And again, sorry for no sound. We didn't really need sound for this. In case I decided to play any part of it, I didn't want to risk like a copyright type thing. But either way, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I will catch you guys uh, some other time. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below about this. I'm very excited, but uh, yeah, see ya.